So hello everyone, welcome to Kyra Kitchen. This is our first online cookery workshop that's going to be running every Monday at 1 o'clock. So we're just going to make a simple rustic loaf today. I'm just going to talk you through the ingredients that you might need to buy if you can find them in the supermarkets. So you just need some flour, and some yeast. The final thing you need is some salt. So all together, one loaf of white bread, if you make it at home, instead of buying it from the supermarket, costs about 30p. And we're all stuck at home just now, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's one of the most therapeutic activities ever to knead your own bread. Don't look in my sink, I've got, I've got pots in it. Get out of my sink. Mm -hmm. So there's some equipment that you might need. So you need a bowl. You really probably can't get away without having a bowl. It doesn't need to be this big. I don't know why everything I have is oversized. A weighing scale doesn't need to be digital. Lots of people might have old fashioned weighing scales that are ounces. I'm going to tell you in grams today, and I'm also going to show you how to measure out in just a mug. So if you don't have weighing scales, I can just show you how much flour you need to stick in a mug. The recipe I'm following is my mum's number one bread recipe mixed with my own version. So I'm calling this a rustic white loaf. measured out how much flour is in a mug. So it needs to be a hefty size mug. You know your favourite one that you can fit the most coffee in. Try and find that mug, fill it with flour twice, and that's your proportion of flour. And for your water, it's just under one mug. Even if it's not exactly the same weight, it'll be the right proportions. So just under one water and two of flour. So at this point, when you've got everything in, you can just go straight in, in with your hands if you don't mind getting a bit messy. But what I like to do is just get a knife, just a butter knife, and start mixing all of the ingredients around together. And then that gets rid of some of the liquid and makes it a bit easier when you go in and start kneading, which for me is the really exciting bit. Has anyone out there made bread before? If you're an expert bread maker or if you've given a loaf a go, can you let me know in the comments? So then what I tend to do is just get my hands in and pull things together and then I pour it out just onto a clean surface. So when I first got started, um, just add a little bit more flour if it's really sticky. When I first got started, I used to just fold it and then push it, fold it and then push it, and then it just becomes second nature and you don't need to be as exaggerated. Fold and push and turn. When you need in, you're stretching, pushing, and then using the ball of your hands there to push right down. And the purpose of this is to stretch it, so it's trying to activate the gluten, make it nice and stretchy, and then it's more likely to rise in the oven. You just try to keep this door moving for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes seems a long time, but you want it to be a nice soft, pliable door by the end. And then all you're gonna do is leave it for an hour and a half to two hours to rise. It's now very soft, it's all come together. When you push it, it pops back up. That's a really good sign. So I think that's probably it. So now all we do is we get our bowl back. And I usually put a bit of flour in the bottom of our bowl. And then I get the ball of dough and cover it. So what I cover it with usually is just a tea towel. So I'll just use this tea towel that I've got here. I'm gonna leave mine on top of my fridge and come back to it. hour and a half since we last put the bread there to proof. So you can see inside there that it's risen an awful lot. It's nice and soft. And there it is. So now we've got to knock it back. Knock it back means knocking the air out. You'll hear it squeak a little. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shave our door. What you want to do is start pulling the door across itself. Can you see? So you're lifting and pulling, lifting and pulling, lifting and pulling. So you're trying to get some tension over the top there. And then you want to just flip it over. The best way to do this is just to cup your hands around the top and pull in. Can you see? Cup, push. 
And all I'm doing is grabbing a little bit of the dough underneath and pushing it together. So all the time you're trying to build tension across the top. So I'm in there. You can see we've got a nice shape and look. So I'll just flip it over so you can see what it's like on the bottom. So you can see that it's nearly completely together. And um, again, you just want to cover it with your tea towel. Okay, so we've had our dough resting on here for 30 minutes. Um, and that's perfect, that's what we want. She's rested. So, just get to her off the counter and tap it straight onto there. I don't think you can see me on that one, but... Okay. So I've just cut in there at an angle and hopefully that'll give her a bit of a lip when she comes out of the oven. white loaf and a way to test whether it's done is you tap the bottom sounds nice and hollow and then you've got the hardest part of all of it which is leaving it to cool before you slice it so we're going to do the deed and cut this bread open Nice. Now it's got a really um, crunchy outside, soft and fluffy middle. And perfect with the butter. On. So we'd love you to try this recipe at home and send us some pictures or videos of what you've created. Even if it goes wrong, please send those in too because they're, they're the places that we learn. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week at one o'clock.